Hello, welcome to 3 Minutes Engineering Concepts. The idea of this channel is to explain any engineering concept within 3 minutes time. I will be able to explain any fundamental to advanced concept in mechanical engineering and material science. If you like the idea, then please subscribe to our channel and also share our videos and channel details to colleagues and students who can benefit from it. Thank you. Okay, so just to recap what we know until now, before we go into the technical details of today's video, we now know the relationships for the kinematic equation in 1D case for our trust member, which relates the strains with the displacements. We know the constitutive equation in 1D case, which is again valid for our trust member, and that relates the stresses with the strains. And based on the equilibrium equations, we know our dynamic and static equilibrium equation. Again, the goal is to find the unknown field variables by solving these differential equations. And in this case, our unknown field variables variable is a displacement, which is denoted by U in this case. So what else we know from our previous videos is uh, we know that what is Hamilton's principle, which is given by this relationship here, where h is my Hamilton's function, I would say, and it's, it's denoted by this relationship here, which is the sum of all the energies in the system, which means my kinetic energy, my potential energy, which is strain energy in this case, and all the work done by different forces acting onto it. And I gave you the relationship for kinetic energy, which is, sim which is simple basic physics, which is half rho times velocity squared times the volume. Similarly, my so this is my kinetic energy. For my potential energy in this case is the area under the stress strain curve because it's a strain energy in this case, as I said. So it will be strain times the stress times half multiplied by the volume for a small element. And so this is my integral equation. What I do is I replace this sigma with constitutive relationship and that gives me this type of relationship here. Again, I'm deriving these equations or giving you this equation in 3D. And, and it's 1D, then it's, it's all single value here. So I have a single value here, I have a single value here. But I'm giving you these relationships which are valid for 3D, and that's why you see transpose, because your strain matrix, your stress matrix in 3D is 3 by 3. So go back to my videos, and you will remember what, what, what we talked about in the past. Similarly, if I have a body force, and if I have a surface force acting on some surfaces, then I can give force times displacement gives me the work per unit volume. And then I multiply it with a small volume and integrate it over the whole volume that gives me the total force due to that body force. And I do the same for the case of surface forces because it's the surface forces so I need to integrate using the surfaces. So I also know, so now I know the relationship for that. And based on that, I can substitute all these values in my Hamilton's principle and see where I end up with. So in the last video also, I introduced you to the shape functions or interpolation functions, which are a very important ingredient of an FE solver or FEM itself. And in this case, since we were discussing with the, about the truss elements, so, so we, I gave you the relationship for the trusses. And so this was our truss element and I gave, I explained that I have node one and node two, and I can have two displacements in this case, U1 at node one and u2 at node 2. And based on these two nodes, I need to find out two shape functions, right? Depending on the number of nodes and degrees of freedom in each on each node, you need to find out the shape functions for that. Define the shape functions for that. So I gave you the whole derivation last in the last video. So if you if you don't remember, if you haven't gone through that, then please have a look at that. And finally we ended up with these types of shape function, which are linear shape functions because they are only linearly depending on the coordinate system x in this case. And again, we are dealing with the local coordinates in the, in the in this sense, in this case. So finally, we said that, okay, our displacements in the element, which has two nodal displacements, U1 and U2 here, can be given as N, which is N1 is this, and N2 is this, times DE, which is no U1 and U2. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to keep things very simple and brief, and I will give you how the F equation and local coordinate system are constructed. And I will try to give you the relationships for stiffness matrix, strain matrix, and mass matrix in local coordinate system. Later on, we will transform them into global system 
because your truss structure can be in any orientation and can be comprising of many truss elements and also how to solve them will be some will be again we discuss in in future videos so as the first step what i'm going to do is i'm going to use my shear function equation which relates my nodal my actual displacement in the element with the nodal displacements u1 and u2 and substitute them into my strain energy equations kinetic energy equations and the work done equations and then come up with some kind of relationship in terms of shear functions and nodal displacements and once i have done that then i will construct the whole equations in today's video so what we know until now for strain energy if you recall my strain energy is given by this relationship here and what i do i can use my kinematic equation to replace my strains and replace it with the displacement relationship so if you remember my strain is a function of, is is give, can be given by this l times u in the in the 3d space which in our case was the partial derivative of the displacement in x direction if you remember from the first second slide today so what i do i just replace this epsilon i substitute this value of epsilon into this equation at this both places and then i replace this u with this whole thing and then i will explain to you what happens so what i do is i have epsilon transpose and epsilon and i replace it with this so what i end up with is i have the transpose terms of the, my matrices so if you have a and b whole transpose then it becomes b transpose times a transpose it's a matrix rule so my displacement vector so when i substitute this value here from here to here then i will get the e transpose times b and my b is generally given by l times n so because i replace this epsilon by l u and then u with this n times d so this becomes like this so my b is my strain matrix in general terms in a few word and that is basically the partial derivative of my shape functions in simple terms so this is my b matrix or strain matrix and my final relationship for the case of my potential energy is given by this so you can see my de is a neutral displacements which i know generally and b is unknown or depending or depends on the location where i am and dv is the overall volume so it, it remains inside the integral equation itself so this is my relationship for the strain energy function term and now i will go back to the other ones and i will also do the same for the other relationship okay so i already explained to you my strain matrix is given by b times ln so if you remember in in our case my b matrix will be partial derivative of with respect to x of my shear functions n1 and n2 if you remember my n matrix is looks like this so in our, this case it's simple but i'm giving you a general relationship which is valid for any case whether it's a 1d case or 2d case or a 3d case so for truss elements my my l times n will look something like this and if you remember i can replace my n1 and n2 with the relationship which i already provided you in the past and when i take the derivative with respect partial derivative with respect to x i get this type of relationship here so in the previous slide if you remember there was an integral term which was given by this because my nodal displacement given out of the or came out of the integrand itself and this is generally termed as the stiffness matrix of my truss member or truss element in this case one element i am using here so when i replace this integrand with this elemental stiffness matrix here which is given by this relationship then my strain energy equation would look something like this so i will have it will be half times the displacement transpose times my stiffness matrix of element times this and a stiffness matrix can be computed using this relationship again when we will be solving the uh, numerical example then it will make more sense how it works but this is these equations are valid for any dimension whether it's a 1d 2d or 3d case so just to just quickly now i will go quickly go through the thing, same thing because i'm going to do the same thing for the rest of the kinetic energies and also the work done so this is my kinetic energy relationship if you remember and i replace the u by this relationship here and when i simplify my kinetic energy and replace it with this then i get this type of relationship again my nodal displacements are constant so they get out of my integrand and this is my density times my shear function transpose times shear function times water smaller volume and integral over the whole volume i would say and this is generally termed as the mass matrix of my element so in reality 
because it has density determined to it and density can sometimes you can take it as a constant but in many cases it can't it may not be so that's why it's inside the integral and that's why you have to keep it there for the time being but in future you can you will see that we can replace take it out of the integral so my kinetic energy's final relationship would be something like this that my half remains the same here this remains the same here and i replace this this whole term with mass mass matrix or mass e and then the d dot is the same thing here so this is the relationship final relationship for my kinetic energy in this case now coming back coming going back going to the work done term in my hamilton's principle so you remember my work done term was given something like this so these are the force factors for the body forces and surface forces and these are my displacements so i replace this again u with this this equation here and i ultimately end up with this type of relationship where d can again be taken out because these are nodal displacements and i have the force vector which is which i call it capital fb and i have a surface force vector in this case which is capital fs in this case so so my final work done by the forces is given by d transpose time fb so this is d transpose time fb and also de transpose time fs so i'm just trying to remove my integrands which i have to solve separately i can solve them separately somewhere else and i can bring the numbers here and then i can multiply them in the form of bat matrices or something if it's a 3d problem if it's a 1d problem then it's a straightforward thing so just to summarize what we have done until now and for those of the you guys who are already giving me those looks that what this guy is talking about in such complicated equations we have derived the relationship for the strain energy in an element and that is given by half times the nodal displacement vector times the stiffness elemental stiffness matrix times the nodal displacement vector again and my ke is not a simple term but it's an integral form and it is given by this where b is my strain matrix and c is my constitutive equation or constitutive parameters matrix and is is integrated graded over the whole volume similarly my kinetic energy is given by half times the velocity at the nodes times the mass matrix times the velocity at the nodes and my mass matrix is given by this term here and my work done is finally given by this relationship here where i can replace my d transpose i can take this out and i can say that my fp is the total forces acting which is the sum of the body forces and the surface forces so what we have done until now is we we know the relationship for my kinetic energy in terms of stiffness matrix mass matrix and shear functions i know the relationship for my strain energy and the work done so what i do is i just replace these values here and and develop and construct a relationship for my lagrangian function so i substitute all these values here and i find out the relationship for the hamilton function which is given by this so you can see this is my this has mass matrix here in this term so this is my kinetic energy term this has a stiffness matrix into it so this is my strain energy function this is the work done by the force itself i replace this i substitute this value of h here this is a typo here so it should be h here and so i get this kind of relationship which is given here which is shown here and then i apply some variational principles again if you're interested you can go back to any basic fe book and they explain all these basic cal cal calculus with variational principles so you apply those principles and you find the solution of that and you construct a linear equation which looks something like this and you can see and this is an fm equation for an element or which could be a 1d element 2d element or 3d element so again you can see this is the stiffness times the matrix stiffness matrix times the displacement part this is the inertia part in a way and this is the force uh, or for forces in the element itself so now i know my relationship for or my, i know that if we finite element equation for my truss element in the local coordinate system which is given by this equation here where ke is my stiffness matrix and it is given by this relationship so if i want to solve this equation here to find out what is the relationship for the ke for my truss member itself if you remember that then my b matrix which will be l times n will be dava x over dava x dava over dava x times the shear function matrix so when i take the partial derivative of these two terms here i end up with my b matrix as minus 1 over le and 1 1 over l 
I substitute these values here into my KE equation. So my AE is my the area, area of my whole uh, cross-sectional area of my truss member in this case. And since my only variation will be along the axis, longitudinal direction of my truss member, which is X direction. So I integrate it over DX in this case, because my area is constant throughout. And I replace my values of with a B. So this first term is a B transpose. So I try to take a transpose of this and it becomes like this. So this is my B transpose. My C matrix in this case will be a one value because it's a Young's modulus, it's a 1D problem. And then my B matrix again, and that B matrix comes from here. I integrate this, multiply them and integrate them. So I get this type of value, this type of relationship for my stiffness matrix. What you see here is my stiffness matrix depends on the area, cross-sectional area of the element, Young's modulus, material of the element, length of the element, and these numbers here. And what this matrix tells you is, my stiffness matrix is symmetric. So if I take a transpose of this matrix, I'll get the same result. So generally in linear elastic fracture mechanics, your stiffness matrix is symmetric. So I do the same for my mass matrix. So if you remember my mass matrix relationship was given by this equation here, and I substitute the values of N transpose and N in, a, in this equation, and then I sub multiply them together and simplify them. So I get this type of relationship. When I, once I substitute the values of N1 and N2 in this equation here, and I integrate them from zero to LE, I get my mass matrix. And again, mass matrix also, you can see is a symmetric matrix in our case. So I do the same for my force vector here, and I substitute the values of N in this integral equation. And as you can see, I can replace my FB and FS, which are the four body forces and the surface forces here acting onto, onto, my, onto my truss element. So suppose the element is loaded by an, an evenly distributed FX force along the x-axis and two concentrated forces FS1 and FS2 are acting on two areas as I showed you here, node 1 and node 2. So I, I replaced with FX and FS1 and FS2 here. And then I solve the problem. I solve the, the equation here and I get this type of relationship for my force vector in the equation itself. So what we have done until now is we, I, I try to give you a general and a very brief overview of how to construct FE equations in local coordinate system. I gave you the relationship for local stiffness matrix and elemental local mass matrix and also give you the relationship for force vectors, kinetic energies, and the strain energies. So based on this, in the reality, your, your truss member can be oriented in any direction in a 3D space. So if it's a truss structure, which can have many truss members oriented in different directions or different orientations, then how to transfer the coordinate system? That's what we're gonna see in the next lecture, how to transfer these local equations into global coordinate system. And then based on that, how to convert or construct global stiffness matrix and global mass matrix using the elemental local stiffness and mass matrices. So until that time, I will stay safe and I will see you next in the next video.